it's Wednesday the 21st of August I'm just setting out on my first camping trip on my new touring bike this is my giant tough road SLR 2 bike if you've seen my recent videos you'll know that I had my old touring bike stolen back in June I've moved on from that I've got a new one I'm heading just the other side of Wells for my hometown of Bath the whole trip's no longer than 23 miles this is a chance to test out how this new bike is going to cope with a pannier rack with full camping kit on. I've only had it six weeks, so it's a bit early to say definitively, but my first impressions as a day ride bike in the summer in good conditions are very, very positive. But I've put on a brand new pannier rack that I bought. I'll show you more about that when we get the campsite when the panniers are off. And I'll give you an idea of how it's coped. On this video I'll talk to you more when we get to Wells but tonight I wanted to bring the kitchen sink really a bit and make it a comfortable tour so I've got a chair a table I'm going to cook curry from scratch and hopefully pick up a couple of bottles of lager and it looks like it's going to be a lovely day we're heading that way so about three miles mostly downhill now to Wells so I'm going to enjoy this here we are, we intersect with the B3139, the Bath to Wells Road. Oh, here is the boundary sign for Wells. Look, welcome to the city of Wells. Here we are. take us right past Wells Cathedral under the arch okay. big public school all around here is cathedral half past two quarters o'clock it's very grand and there's cathedral green in front of it but that's what we're heading for over there st leonard's church i actually prefer st leonard's church to one of the marvels of the west country actually bring us into this used to be the old a39 believe it or not too well before the bypass this would have had a ton of holiday traffic coming through here middle of the summer just off the left will be that famous square bishop's palace square where they did that big fight scene in hot fuzz where the market is on a wednesday give you a quick shot street market then you've actually got wells running down either side no water in that side the water down here just gives it such an atmosphere this which is now quite a popular pub is actually the old city jail believe it or not so i'm going to head down there this this section I had to walk because it's one way the wrong way get back on my bike down there towards st leonard's i've just left wells on the burcott road come through this residential area and all of a sudden, Wells just suddenly stops. Can you see? Around this little minor road heading out towards the campsite. That's the big hill in front of us, Ben Knoll. That's what we're heading for. Back there, there was like a little estate shop, the Burcott stores. Just stopped in there and got myself some lager for tonight. So I've got a curry kit and a chicken breast. So I'll be uh, cooking myself a curry tonight. very small little lane literally just suddenly takes you it's almost like going through a door and you're out onto sunset levels it's fairly flat round here but there's all these little lumps they're almost like little mini glastonbury tours and one of them is what we're heading for ben knoll right at the foot of that is this campsite on a farm i'm hoping we can get in there i've stayed there a few times in the past can see we're right out in the heart of 
farming community now scattered houses and farms and then once we break this tree cover that's pretty much where the farm is where we're heading for 1.1 miles and it just feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere yet we're only about a mile and a half from wells yeah i can see ben Knoll in front of us just like that grassy mound with the tree covering on the top and then on my left is just flat Somerset levels it all seems familiar just round this corner I think yeah we can see a field there with camper vans and tents Yeah, massive big fields, quite a few tents already, but plenty of room by the look of it. Right next to Reen on the right hand side. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Pine Tree Farm. Let's pop in and see where the house is. Gosh, you've even got some seats there, look. Pop in through here. Yeah, that looks like it reception yet just looking down there you can actually see Glastonbury Tor in the distance so I'll take a wander down there later on oh there you can see it look right in the distance leaning up there's a classic car rally coming here tomorrow so she said this field will be full of cars in the morning from uh, mid-morning onwards tomorrow so you can sort of see there's a 2CV and an old black whatever it is over there. Oh, there's a water tap there. Let's go and get my tent set up. So that's looking the way I've just come in, the minor road that runs right the way along. See some of the classic cars there. There's another one just turned up. That's looking down towards Glastonbury. And that's Ben Knoll. Oh gosh, there's a big house up there with a load of scaffolding around it. And there's a farm over there. Right in front of us is the shower blocks. And I've come along here, just a little bit away from other people, just in case I've got friends arriving. Guy roped my bike out, got me ground sheet here ready to start putting everything on. I'll get the tent up. I've got the Van Gogh Banshee 200, so you've seen that before. So I'm not one of these people that have a billion tents, like a brand new thousand pound tent every time I make a video. I've just got my old favourite actually that I use quite often. I've brought my chair with me. So I've got a seat to sit on and when I do that I always put the tent pegs and the poles in there to tripod to film later on and I've got my stick table as well so there's the sticks for that. That makes packing the tent up really easy. I can just shove it in the stuff sack then it packs them smaller than the sleeping bag. First things first, get the poles together. I'll get the tent up about there. I did say I'll tell you about the rack I bought. I, I was going to get the rack fitted by Avon Valley Cyclery because they said bring it back after six weeks and they'll do a service and they said to me they'll fit mud guides on the rack for free you know if I bought them there but I wanted to go camping before then because otherwise I'm going to miss most of the season so I bought an Altura Tortec rack they normally go for £49.99 I picked this up for £34.99 £35 so I saved £15 on that. I made sure it wasn't a Chinese copy. I didn't buy it off eBay or anything. I bought it off a reputable dealer. It's the last one he had and he just happened to get rid of it. It looks very substantial. It's 10 millimeter thick, which is thicker than my old one. I know that because my pannier clips, I had to put in some different adapters. It came with seven millimeters and 11 millimeters. So I had to take the sevens out and put 11s on. As you can see it's four point fitting that's the reason i didn't buy the other bike i was going to buy the the slr one version of this bike in blue but that came with a three point fixing rack which i just didn't want i wanted the four especially as the brazons were already on so it's got the four brazons and it's got a second bar and that is so i can either have the top bag and the small panniers on there at the same time which i may do for youth hostling 
or I've come out today with the big panniers on, on that top bar. When I'm riding it without panniers, I've ridden it a few times now with just a top bag on the top. So that's ideal. It's a really substantial beefy rack. It sanitizes, as you can see. What I do like is it comes with this back plate for lights. And so I like cat eye rear lights. So I just bought a cat eye adapter to put on there, 399, so I can have my cat eye lights on there. Because I always put rechargeable batteries in those. And so they're always topped up. Every time I do a ride, I come home, take the batteries out and top them up. And I always have a second light. So when I'm touring with panniers, I've got a bracket on there. And when I'm using the top bag, which is most of the time, I'll have that light down there. So I've always got two. It's nice to have two lights when it's really dark and you're out in the countryside. And also one acts as a backup for the other. So I'm pleased with the rack. When I first left home this morning, you know, the first thing I was aware of, it wobbled a little bit with the luggage on the back. But it did that with the old bike, but very, very quickly. As with all my bikes, you just get used to it. You soon adapt to it. Because I bought this new and it's an Altura, it came all shrink wrapped and plastic wrapped. You know, I know it's genuine, not a copy. And it told me that the maximum luggage allowance, the maximum luggage carrying capacity is 30 kilograms. And I've never weighed my luggage before. And I was pretty sure I was never anywhere near that. That's 66 pounds. And I know from being a postman, we were only supposed to carry 20 pounds. They quite often weigh our bags to make sure we didn't carry more. And so I got some luggage scales. I just picked some up from my local hardware shop. And I weighed the panniers this morning and it's 20 pounds each side. I made sure I, I loaded the panniers equally. I, I, I rode into the campsite with just over 40 pounds on because I'd bought a couple of bottles of beer. And so that's well within the maximum allowance. I've also ordered through the Treads website because I deal with them. Got no links to them whatsoever. I just find them a reputable dealer and the service is always good. I've actually pre-ordered the specific giant front rack. So again, if I'd bought the SLR one, it would have come with that front rack on. I very rarely use front racks. I normally just get everything in the back too. The only time I put a front rack on is when I go off hot tent camping in the winter. So that rack's due in, in mid to late September. So it should be with me in plenty of time to go hot tent camping. And it just bolts on there and there. And then I can take it off easily when I don't use it. Sun's out again, so it's drying my towel quite nicely. So the reason I bought this bike, if you've been following me, <laughs> I had my touring bike stolen. I didn't really know what to buy. I nearly went for a steal, like for like, either a Genesis or a Ridgeback. And then I saw this, and it's marketed as a gravel bike, and I thought, hey, that might suit me. Giant, I just thought, it's a reputable brand. I'll try it. If it's no good, I'll just sell it on or try and part exchange it. My two reasons for buying it were I wanted a replacement for the caribou, which I used for winter riding, and I want to feel safe, straight handbars and wider tyres, and a higher centre of balance. You know, when the roads could possibly be slippy with ice or gravel or slippery leaves. So mostly it's going to be for winter riding, but I also want to use it for summer touring. And at the moment, admittedly, I've only had it for less than six weeks, but it just seems to fit the bill perfectly. Um, my first month and a bit of it, I'm very, very pleased with it. As I said, I don't do technical reviews. The other thing I was a little bit concerned about was the Caribou had a triple chain set and a fairly narrow, tight, compact lock on the back. This has only got a double chain set, so I thought I may have to tweak about with the, the gears, but that was the least of my worries. I just wanted a bike that fitted and felt right. But I've got to say today with the, with the luggage, I didn't have to get out saddle whatsoever. You know, the gears seem to be fantastic. The front chain rings are 44 and I think the inner is 22. If that's wrong, I'll put it on the screen now. And on the back, I've got nine speed, 11 up to 36. 
and that just gives me the fantastic range of gears I can get up most hills quite easily without even getting up the saddle. A lot of the time when I'm on the flat, I just don't struggle to find the gear that I'm comfortable with. And when I am going downhill, like coming off the Mendix today, it's just there's the high gears that I really need. And also having a double chain set as opposed to a triple, it just feels like it's less likely to derail. You know, it could do well with cable stretching and poor maintenance, but it's, I think a double is less likely to do well than a triple, or you're less likely to get bad gear changes. So, again, just my initial thoughts about the bike, but at this moment in time, I'm very, very pleased with it. As long as it lasts and stands up to kind of the punishment I'm going to put it through, I'm very, very happy with it. It's about quarter to seven now. The temperature's starting to cool, so I'm going to start preparing my food. So I've just cut up my chicken breast into little chunks. I'm going to open this curry pack now. All the instructions are really simple. There's only three stages and on the back. So I just mix the spices in, fry that in a bit of oil just until the chicken's starting to brown. Then you mix the marinated sauce up with a little bit of water, pour that in, and boil that for I think it's about a minute or so and then you add the main sauce in you just cook that for a few more minutes or as I said all the instructions are on the inside but it's all finished within about 10 minutes so I'm actually quite looking forward to it now I'm getting quite peckish there you go that's the herbs and the chicken just going to keep turning those until they brown then pour in the marinating sauce for two minutes and then stir the main sauce in for a further eight. Nice and easy. Smells wonderful already. There is the curry then bubbling away. Really nice big chunky red chilli in there. So I just boil that away until the sauce reduces a little bit. I've got my plate ready. Second beer. There you are, chicken curry. And I've just boiled in that saucepan. Got my second bottle of lager open. Just enjoying the moment actually. 8.30 p.m. now and I've had my curry packed away. Still got one bottle of beer left. Might take it back up on that seat actually by the mound. You can tell the evenings are definitely drawn in. The other evening when it was overcast and wet, it was dark by about quarter to eight. Last night was completely clear, but it was also dark say by about 9 p.m. So the evenings are definitely drawing in. Just going to go down there and have a look down south, down towards Glastonbury Tor. And this is the lane that I came in on. There's Glastonbury Tor right in front of us. You don't get much more idyllic than this really do for a campsite. A little rain running alongside. It's a very, very minor road. Tractor just pulled out. So there's a T junction there that heads down towards Glastonbury, and that's the way I think I'm leaving tomorrow morning. That I'll head up towards Wookie and Wookie Hole. That'll be more churches. But this is just looking down south. That very iconic view, Glastonbury Tor. See if I can zoom in a bit. This is on my action camera, so the zoom in's not great on this, but give you an idea what we're looking down at. This is exactly why I just wanted a campsite. Just a nice little cosy place like this without the fear of being moved on or people turning up or wondering you know, whether I'd be challenged. Just It was £11 a night by the way. So that was a bargain as far as I'm concerned. And it was a pound for the shower, which is brilliant because when you put your money in, unlike the old showers where you had to put coins in and it just dropped into a clangy rusty old box this one was all modern it had a digital display as soon as you put your pound in it started counting down on a large digital display for about eight minutes and believe me eight minutes is more than enough to have a shower so i was able to stay there and watch that clock once i'd washed myself down washed my hair i just spent the second half of that eight minutes just watching the clock count down you know under a really boiling hot shower So yeah, that's the way I come in, and I think that's where I'm going to tomorrow. 
pine tree farm. No, that rain, rain, however you pronounce it, needs clearing out. That'll probably happen in the next few years. I think they're, they're drained and cleaned every five years or so. And what depends on which part of the country you come from, whether you call them rains or rhines. Right, I think I'm going to get my third and final bottle of beer. I'll just sit on that seat up there where I had the first one. So, yeah, I'm going to bring the beer up and sit here, I think. Just chill out. Watching it get dark down there. It's just coming up to 9pm now, and I'm back up on this slight little rise on one of the seats in the middle of this campsite. I'm on the third pint of lager. I've had my curry, washed it all up, put it all away. Everything's ready just to dive in the tent later on. Just sat here looking down over the sunset levels down towards Glastonbury Tor. That's behind the camera, so that's behind you. Just loving the moment, actually. All the camper vans with their little awnings all lit up. Uh, people walking dogs. There's awning over there. We've just got lots of different coloured fairy lights over there. Uh, toilet blocks all lit up. It's just a wonderful moment, actually. I've really been longing for a campsite like this for a while because for the last few years I've been wild camping, rough camping and I do love that but I've just been longing to go back to very small commercial campsites like this. I've been watching people like Paul Messner on YouTube when he was doing the West Highland Way he used a lot of commercial sites like this and my mate from Bristol Terry who rides to Brompton he uses a lot of small farm or organic farm campsites so I've just been longing for campsites like this and it also allowed me to test the bike really I just knew that if I got in trouble with the bike I could sort of head home quickly and get it fixed or there was even a bike shop in Wales so it's a test ride but the bikes held up fine actually I did I was a little bit concerned by the wheels as I said they're only factory built ones with 28 spokes in but they seem to have you know they seem to be fine you know touch wood first night eight but I was given some pretty beefy serious expedition wheels so I can always put those in for touring if I need to but who knows I may not need to somebody just gone down they've just pulled their barbecue out, it looks like they're about to light a barbecue, it's just a wonderful moment, so I'm just sat and sitting here, just enjoying the moment, cheers. It's now 10.30pm, I'm back in my tent, and as I came back in, the ground sheet outside was very, very wet already, so the condensation is starting to build up. Lovely and cool in here, but for now, I'm going to say good night, see you in the morning. Twenty past five in the morning now. As you can see, it's pitch black in my tent, but you may hear it's raining outside. You can hear the pitter patter on the fly sheet. There was rain forecast. So I, was, I was prepared for this, and it should be easing off about seven, eight o'clock. So that give me a chance to get outside and have some breakfast and pack the tent up. Hopefully, in the dry. And then it should stop completely around about mid-morning towards lunchtime. So today I'm actually going to be heading back up over the Mendips. But before I do that, I'm going to go to the village of Wookie. And then the tourist spot of Wookie Hole. Because both of those have got churches I want to look around. Then I'm going to take the old Roman road up over the Mendips. It's the Wells to Bristol Road. The old Wells to Bristol Road. And then I'll drop back down towards Bath, stopping at a couple more churches as well. Meanwhile, I'm just going to sit here and listen to this 
name on the outside of the tent. It's, it's actually quite a nice sound actually because you feel so cosy in here. Yet yeah, just a couple of millimetres away there's rain hammering down on the fly sheet. It's probably about six o'clock now in the morning. The rain stopped about five minutes ago. It's a good opportunity to get dressed to walk over the toilet block. You can see it's almost light. Start hearing the birds singing. It's not exactly a dawn chorus, but certainly the birds crowing. There's an owl hooting over there when I was closer to the farm. I've got the tent light on, so that's the air mat pump, which actually doubles up as a tent light. It's got a ring around it, so you can just hang it up inside the tent. I put the ground sheet over the saddle and the bike last night, so I've kept most of the bike dry. My seat's upside down, so hopefully it'll be dry enough to sit on when I get up for breakfast. You can hear a little bit of bird song. It's not exactly a dawn chorus, but it's the birds in the trees. Some crows crowing down there. As I walked over towards the farm, you could hear an owl hooting somewhere up in the woods. Just really enjoying this. I'll just walk down and show you the Gestapo car. So a Citroen, I'm not sure if that's a Skoda or a Peugeot. Look at that beast. Just coming up to 9am and I've been rushed to try and avoid the next batch of rain but it actually seemed to have blown over. I had one or two spots on me when I was taking the tent down. See I pretty much got everything ready to go on the bike. This is where the guy ropes really help as long as you put the panniers on together otherwise it'll lean to one side. Still got me flip flops on, probably going to walk across the wet grass and then put my shoes on over there and then just wedge my flip flops down so I've just got to roll up the ground sheet now load the bike i should be on the road you know within 10 minutes or so okay that's me all packed up just going to carry my shoes over so i don't start off with wet cycling shoes and socks i'm going to walk over to the toilet block and the wall and it's just gone 9 a.m which for me is quite an early start these days i tend to dawdle and linger a bit but i do want to go to these churches today so you know i want to allow myself plenty of time still get home at a reasonable hour really enjoyed this actually especially those that seat up there on that mound it's not very high but it's just high enough to look down at Glastonbury Tor as it got dark that's fantastic the bike all loaded up then I've just changed into my cycling shoes looking back that tree there there's a couple of seats under it on that slight rise I was on the other side of the field that's the way I'm going out here turning right almost immediate right then I'm heading towards St Mary's Church at Wookie then St Mary Magdalene Church at Wookie Hole and then it's right up over the pendants. Right let's get going. Here we go. Then right at the end of the farm you turn right it's about a mile or so up to Wookie. Thank you very much Pine Tree Farm. That was a lovely night's camping. Everything I wanted and more actually. Curry, lagers, just the feeling of you know I'm supposed to be there. I'm not going to be challenged or anything. That peace of mind really. And peace yeah so thoroughly enjoyed that.